Hey guys, so in this video we'll be looking at quartic graphs. So quartic graphs are graphs of quartic functions. So that's graphs where you have the highest power is 4, such as x to the 4 plus 3x squared plus 2, for example. And in general, with they have a formula of a x to the 4 plus b x to the 3 plus cx squared plus dx plus e, where a, b, c, d, e can all be constants, and they could also be zero, as you see here. Uh, b is zero, and then d is zero as well. So when you're graphing these, you need to understand the general shape of quartic graphs. With regards to graphing them, they're quite similar to cubics. So in general, they have a shape like this. So you can see the similarity to cubics, however, it does have the, the three turning points and then the four intercepts. And that's when you have the equation in the form sort of y equals the brackets x plus a, x plus b, x plus c, and then x plus d. However, it does look slightly different when y is equal to x to the four. So when y is equal to x to the 4, it looks a bit like a quadratic. So it looks a bit like that. However, it's a lot steeper along the bottom. So that's not an amazing graph, but it looks a bit more like that. And that's due to the similarity to a quadratic with regards to x squared, and then you're squaring it again, because that's the same thing here. And then for this graph, the point would be 0, 0. When you have multiple, when you have it in as a factor form, such as I had it before, such as y is equal to like this, you can have the brackets to different powers, such as, let's say, 2 and 2. So x plus a and x plus b. And that's fine, because when you expand that out, it's still to the highest power is 4. So it's still a... Um, quadratic. Now, this means that the x-intercept, x, y, would be negative a, negative a, 0, and here it would be negative b, 0. And instead of coming uh, down and then going through, rather there will be a turning point like that, and it will go like this, and like that. And this is what I mentioned in the video about cubics. You can have the squared terms, and then you'll have quadratic. If it's just to the 1, it'll go through. And if it's to the power of 3, you'll have a point of inflection like that. And if that was, let's say, y is equal to x plus a to the cubed, x plus b, you may have a graph that looks something like this. Negative a, 0 negative b, 0, so that's the x-intercept, this is the y. This comes down, something like that. There's a turning point, then it comes back up, and it looks something like this. Now, of course, it can come the other way, so it can go through, have a turning point, and then come down. And I always find the easiest way to know that is to look at the y-intercept. However, if you are looking at going back to the general equation, so y is equal to ax to the 4 plus bx3 plus cx squared, then you can look at a, and if a is greater than 0, it will look like this, and if a is less than 0, it will look more like that. However, even if you are going to look at these a values, I highly recommend you still find the y-intercept, and even if you're graphing, you will have to find the y-intercept any either way. Now, graphing cortex is a bit unusual, that like you don't have to do it too often. If you are to do it, you're most likely going to have to factorize the expression. And so you factorize that by using the um, remainder theorem, then you can find one factor, then you should probably find another factor, and you can use long division by, but instead having, let's say, x, so you find two factors, let's say x minus 2, x plus 3. Then you can use long division from that onto 
the entire quadratic. Find that out. Find the other two. The remainder will be zero. Then the whatever the quotient up here will be will be another thing such as this, for example. And then, therefore, the equation like y will equal x minus 2, x plus 3 squared, and x minus 2 squared as well. However, just to emphasize, that doesn't always have to be the exact same. Here, that could be, let's say, x minus 4. And if that was the case, then y would equal x plus 3 squared, x minus 2, x minus 4. And you can graph that by finding the x-intercepts, finding the y-intercepts, and then knowing that these will just like pass through, this will uh, touch the axis and then go up, and then you can graph it from there.